Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I am very excited to share with you guys my video today which is going to be my 2020 designer handbag collection and similar to my 2020 designer shoe collection this is kind of an overarching video to help round out and share with you guys which bags I have this year. As you may know from the other one, I do have a couple from here as well that I'm going to be selling, similar to my shoes. So hopefully this time next year they will have sold and I can have some more space in my closet made for some new Maliva bags that I have on my wish list because as always, these dream bag wish lists are always extensively long. But without further ado, let's just jump right into today's video. I also just realized I want to also put in the disclaimer before we start with the handbags that I don't want this to come off as bragging in any sort of way at all. I've had a couple of requests in the past for me to kind of share my complete handbag collection. Compared to some of my other friends and YouTubers out there, I don't feel like my handbag collection is vast, but I can definitely understand how it may seem like I have a lot to other people. So please just watch this video at your own discretion. I am not trying to brag, nor do I want to brag about my collection at all. I just hope you guys enjoy seeing these beautiful bags with me. All right, so I haven't quite yet decided how I kind of want to walk through this collection. I think what I'm actually going to do is start from like smallest and move my way up to biggest instead of any sort of other, I guess, categorization. I was thinking of doing it by brand, but I have a lot of different brands here. So we're gonna go through a lot of them, so I figured maybe size-wise would be the best. So let's just jump right into that. All right, so the very first one that I have is this tiny little guy from Chloe. This one is so, so, so adorable. I actually received this a few years ago, two years ago, from the brand as part of a PR package. It was for a launch of one of their brand new fragrances and they just added this cute little bag along with it. I think she's absolutely adorable. I'm also very happy that they gave me a neutral color sometimes when brands send you PR packages with small um, products or like small other goods like this. They send you the strangest colors and I've had bags show up on my doorstep that were like bright red or bright blue. I'm like, you know what, thank you, I really appreciate it but I can never wear this anywhere because it's not my color. I really appreciate that Chloe gave me this beautiful beige little color bag. I haven't really worn her out anywhere just quite yet because I typically like my bags to be large enough for me to put things in. Very, very cute though. Kind of sits on your waist as a crossbody bag. It's large enough for you to put, I don't know, maybe your phone inside if you're going to... No, you can't really stretch it all the way out unless you do this. And then, yeah, I guess you could fit your phone inside and a couple of coins and that's about it. This is the extent of the bag if you were to use it as an actual purse. So I don't really use it as a purse. I use it more as like a cute accessory coin pouch if I was to wear it out. But because of its size, I haven't actually quite had the chance to wear it out too frequently yet because it's not exactly the most convenient. And Peter gets mad at me when I don't carry my own things. So if I was to just give him my phone and my keys to carry all day long, I don't think he'd be impressed. So this one mostly stays at home on the shelf and I wear it out every once in a while if I'm just gonna run a quick errand where I don't need to carry a lot. But other than that, she's my little beauty. Super, super cute. Even though I don't really wear her that much, I don't really want to sell her because I think it's adorable and there's some sort of functioning use for it down the road one day. So yeah, in the meantime, she's going to be sitting on my shelf. I don't actually know the name of this one either, so sorry, I won't be able to give you the details on it or where to buy it because I have no idea what it's called. Next up, size-wise, is my Prada Constellation Kaye bag. And this is in the black velvet. So I just went in and pulled out the chain so I can show you what it looks like on camera here. So this is a whole bag. It has a brushed gold metal chain. And on the top, it has like a leather shoulder strap, which I really like because it helps to make my shoulders not feel as like painful when I'm wearing the chain. I found some bags that have only chain straps kind of hurt after a while when they sit in your shoulder for too long. And because this has this top handle strap up here, it kind of eases it onto your shoulder a little bit and makes it a little bit more comfortable to wear. So I actually got this bag, I think about like four, four, no, three years ago in London. When this style first got released, it was, I don't even think available in Canada in the velvet. And this is actually the only velvet bag that I own. I was very tempted to get the Gucci Marmont one, but I held off because I felt like everybody had that one. And then when I saw that Prada had these Constellation bags and it came out in a velvet, I was determined to track this down. So on my trip to London a couple of years ago, I finally found it on the Bond Street location, scooped it up. I was the happiest girl in the world and I am still very happy when I look at this bag. It is a stunner. A work of art and absolutely beautiful. I can wear this bag with a very simple outfit and feel extremely, extremely put together. The only downside to this bag though that I find is that it's actually quite small. Uh, definitely not as small as a Chloe bag, but it's not exactly the largest bag in the world. As you can see, this is the whole compartment on the inside. I usually can only really fit my purse 
keys, a singular lip balm, and my phone in there, and it's still a very, very tight fit. So I don't wear her out as often as I used to anymore, primarily because I need to carry a lot more around with me sometimes. I end up only really reaching for this bag now as an evening bag whenever we go out or if we're going to like a dressy event. Seeing as we've currently been living with a pandemic for this past year, I haven't really had anywhere to wear her out to, but this is my beautiful evening bag and it will forever be part of my collection because it just it's just like an art collector's piece. I can't get rid of her. I'm trying my best to stay size wise with these bags, but I may be a little bit off here and there. So please don't come at me if you guys notice there is a very big difference between the size of the bags. The next one up is this burgundy little fur love bag. I actually received this bag as a PR gift last year when they first launched in Canada. And I've only really used her a couple of times, primarily because the chain kind of hurt my shoulder a little bit. It's a very, very heavy, thick chain, kind of like a champagne gold color. And it doesn't have that leather strap on the shoulder top here so this is what I meant when I said that sometimes the chains dig into my shoulders when I'm wearing them and it gets a little bit painful because this is such a heavy duty chain it sits rather heavily on my shoulders and it does hurt after a while so I haven't worn her that much I wore burgundy and red bags a lot a lot last year and the year before so this is really really appropriate at the time I'm sure in the future I will find use for this bag again and I will break it out at some point definitely it's just in the meantime right now with the current way I'm treating and wearing my bags it hasn't been on high heavy rotation but it's such a sturdy one and a really really great carry around and like throw around bag because of the leather so I'm definitely not going to be getting rid of it because it's good for days when I just want to go out and run errands really quickly and have like a nice sturdy bag to throw everything into I love 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 the fact that it's one of those bags that just has like a giant hole I'm the type of person who likes to be able to shove things into my bags you guys will see there is a trend with these bags they all have a relatively similar shape and style by the end of this video let me know if you can identify it but I like the bag because it's really easy to access and it's not too difficult to like take things in and out of it. I wasn't sure if this was bigger than the furlough bag, but it is. So I am on the right track in regards to comparing these bags by size. But the next one is my, I think this is a, a mini rectangular chevron flap. I actually got this bag about five years ago. This was the first Chanel purchase I ever got and boy was I excited about this baby. So I picked this up on a trip to Vegas on a work trip because I was like, you know what, when am I ever going to buy a Chanel bag at that point? Lo and behold, I have two more now, but I still really, really love this bag. It has served me amazingly as a great evening bag. It's a little bit more dressy than a lot of my other bags, so I don't break it up as often because the patent leather is so shiny. I do really love it though because it has such like a beautiful look to it and the chevron is so, so, so sleek. The only thing that annoys the heck out of me is the staining that happened onto this bag and I quickly learned that I can never have a beige patent bag ever again. So I learned that patent is not a superficial texture that's applied to the leather, it's how the leather is treated. So when something stains a leather on a patent bag, it's actually staining it through and through. It's not just a surface level stain, which really hurts my heart because I have, I don't know how these got onto here, but a bunch of these like yellow highlighter stains on the bag, I'm not gonna show it up close to you guys on the camera because it just hurts me to look at it myself so I don't want you to have to be able to go through the torture of seeing the stains. And I also have this like weird little dark mark up here. I accidentally wore this bag one time when I was wearing dark colored pants. So there's also some color transfer and payoff on the back here. But because it was my very first bag ever, I don't think I would ever really consider selling this like whatsoever at all. It's going to be staying in my collection forever. And because it is such a classic color as well, I'm definitely going to be able to wear it down the road once I kind of like get over the heartbreak of all the stains on here I still very much love this bag the only issue is that it's a little bit small similar to all the other small bags that I showed you guys apparently I have a penchant for collecting small bags that serve me no purpose but I love this one and I will never ever ever be giving it away primarily due to the fact that it was one of my very first like big designer girl purchases and it was my first Chanel so I can't get rid of her because of that so she's going to be staying at home in my collection forever. Next up is one that you've probably seen a lot on my Instagram and on my YouTube account because I wear it so frequently. And this is my Gucci Soho disco bag in the black, um, I guess like caviar-ish pebbled leather. As you can see, this bag has not held up its shape well for me. I definitely used and abused this bag. It has been through rain, snow, I think sleet and like ice storms, but it has served me really, really well. Obviously with the use of this bag and the leather that it's made out of, I was not anticipating it would hold a shape perfectly forever, but it's actually held up pretty well for me otherwise. 
The corners are a little bit more smooth down with wear and tear use. The zipper is still amazing. It slides so easily to open and shut. And this bag has a humongous capacity for holding things inside of it. As you can see, the inside is lined with this like really, really light, I don't even know how to describe this, like a linen material. And a lot of my other designer bags are actually lined with leather, which makes it difficult for me to use them as throw around bags because I want them to be catch all bags where I can throw whatever, whenever inside of them. And because this has a more fabric material inside, I don't feel as bad if I'm throwing things in like granola bars it's not going to scratch up the interior of the bag i've definitely thrown my passport pens in here before there are no stains inside which is great but i like that the inside of the bag is so easy to use that i don't have to feel too worried when i'm throwing things inside that it's going to damage the interior of the bag so i highly recommend this bag for anybody who wants an easy throw around everyday bag and wants to foray into the world of designer bags but doesn't want to spend too much. Yes, it still is an expensive bag, but it's definitely nowhere near as expensive as like a Chanel or Dior. You're not gonna be splurging $5,000 on this one. I think at the time when I purchased it, it was around like $1,400 or something. I'm not quite sure how much it is now. It actually might've been a little bit less when I bought it at the time. But because of the durability of it and how well it's held up and lasted me, and I've been able to literally throw anything and everything into it, I could not recommend this bag more it has served me so well and I can definitely see it serving me even better for another like 10 years or so at minimum I don't foresee this bag falling apart anytime soon there's like zero wear and tear indicating that it would fray or break or snap anywhere so next is my Chloe Fay bag I don't really know how to describe the color of this it's like a really beautiful brown with an olive undertones to it if that helps. It's very earthy color, if that makes sense. I absolutely adore this bag when I first got it because it matched with everything that I had. This beautiful neutral color goes so well with so many different outfits. It only started to annoy me a little bit when I got kind of like pissed off with how loud the hardware is. Can you guys hear this? Like it jingles and jangles everywhere. It's kind of annoying after a while. But I liked how roomy the inside of the bag was. As you guys know, I like bags with a lot of space and you can fit so much stuff in here. So I was ecstatic when I could carry like everything from my phone, my wallet, my keys, a snack. I've even thrown like some small water bottles in here before and it has fit perfectly fine. So I absolutely love this bag. I think in the past couple of years, I've grown and moved on from this bag and I don't find myself reaching for it as frequently as I used to, which is why I have been listing it online for sale. If you guys are interested, definitely check out my Poshmark because it's going to be available up there. I've also put it up on Instagram as well too, but no takers on there just quite yet. So we might actually find um, some consignment stores to list it for me to see if I can just like access their database of buyers to kind of like get this guy out of my house. I would like to make space for some other bags if I'm not going to be reaching for this one as frequently. The only annoying thing about this one is that the screw backs on these adjustable knobs here for the straps fell off. I don't think they were screwed on ever appropriately. So they fell off quite early on into me using this bag and now I can't really adjust the strap length anymore. Not that it was that big of an issue because you could only really shorten it by like this much more anyways. And this bag actually sits quite low slung on your hips. I never really liked that. I kind of wished it sat a little bit higher, but c'est la vie, that's the way the bag is designed. Because of that, even though I really like the bag and the color, it just wasn't really functional in how I wanted to sit on my body. And I just don't find myself reaching for it as frequently anymore. This one is going to be sold hopefully quite soon. Here's where I have a hard time differentiating the different sizes of my bags. I've come to a point now where a lot of my bags are very similar size wise. So I'm going to try my best to work through relatively what I think they should be in order in. And first up is my Gabrielle backpack. This is the medium size. I got it in the aged calfskin in this beautiful kind of gray sandy blue color with a black base and the silver hardware. Well, it's not really a silver hardware. It's a rhodium hardware for the plaque here. And then the chain itself actually has, I believe, two different types of hardware. It rotates between the rhodium and the champagne gold. So this bag was actually a splurge from my trip two years ago to Paris. And it was one of those like, when you know when you're in Paris, you really gotta pick up a Chanel bag. So I did, I got myself this one. And I truly love the Gabrielle bag. I apologize for the sun, guys. It is very aggressive right now and I can't fix it. So it's gonna be relatively contrasting here. Hopefully some clouds come over in a bit. So it gets a little bit more overcast and I have more ambient lighting. I'm looking at my phone right now because I can see what I'm seeing on the screen and it looks very, very aggressive. 
I'm so sorry guys. I wish I could do something about this, but I really can't. So we're just gonna continue and hopefully it gets a little bit better. I've turned down the brightness a little bit already because if I had left it as what it was originally, it was very aggressive in the screen. Back to this bag. Hopefully you can see it with this crazy looking sun. If you see me looking off to the sides because I'm trying to assess the lighting every few minutes to make sure it's still consistent. But I got this bag on a recent trip to Paris. Actually my very first trip to Paris three years ago. And it was one of those moments where I was like, you know what, I'm in Paris, I need to buy a Chanel bag and I've had the Chanel Gabrielle on my mind for so long so I picked her up I originally wanted the black on black but I ended up getting the black with the blue because I thought it was a little bit different and unique to all the other bags that I had and I hadn't actually seen anybody else with this bag just quite yet so I wanted something a little bit different and I went with it and I truly love this bag I like that the base has like a shape here so it's really easy to throw things in a lot of the backpacks that I see nowadays don't really have a shape on the base and it makes it hard for you to put things in because everything just sags to the bottom so I'm really happy that it has a base shaper right here the only thing that's annoying to me about this bag is the fact that the top here kind of like sags in a little bit with use so if you don't stuff it fully you're always going to have this like random crease going across here and it really annoys me so i think what i might actually do is buy a bag organizer from smorga which will help to kind of fill in the bag a little bit and to give it a little bit more shape so it doesn't get further damage with creasing down the road oh my god this sun is like really freaking aggressive i didn't think it was going to be this bright today i apologize guys i might take a break and eat something and then come back when maybe the sun goes down a little bit because this is, it's too much. I don't know if I can continue filming like this. Okay, so I waited for a bit and it doesn't seem like the sun is going away anytime soon. So I've kind of readjusted my setup right here. I brought my reflector a little bit closer towards me so that this side of my face isn't as dark. And I've scooted forward a bit so that part of my face is obstructed by like the window. So at least I'm in some relatively flat sunlight. We're gonna try to carry on this video just to finish it up because if I sit here waiting all day for the sun to kind of get more overcast, the sun is just gonna set. At the rate the way things are going, sun sets by 4 p.m. and it's already like two, so I don't have that much time left. Next up in my bag collection is a brand new recent edition that I actually just got within the past like two weeks and it is my small vintage chanel diana flap in lambskin leather i never thought i would get a lambskin leather bag primarily because of the fact that they are so delicate easy to damage i am super clumsy i always brush up against things and, and somehow my bags get scratches on them no matter how hard i try to take care of them i was actually really surprised that i got this for myself but i actually got this as a 100,000 gift to myself when i reached that mark on instagram as like a little celebratory gift and i have been dying to add a diana to my collection for the longest time ever i've been following this girl on instagram called my grandfather's things and she is a diana enthusiast and specialist and what she does is she sources dianas and resells them both lambskin and caviar the only problem though is that these are vintage bags that were discontinued I believe in like the late 90s so they're very hard to get a hold of and they're also very expensive. The caviar ones were made in even less quantity so they're almost double the price of these ones sometimes from what I've seen online so I haven't taken the plunge to explore that one yet but because I really wanted the small size I felt that the lambskin one would be perfectly fine. It's not going to get too dinged up. I'm going to take really good care of it and it's small so it won't lose its shape. I think if I was to get the medium size, I might actually invest in a caviar one so that the shape isn't lost since these are relatively older bags. They're going to get a little bit of wear and tear from me and also from the previous owner. So I believe if I got a caviar one, it would hold up its structure a little bit better. So that's the goal for me down the road. Maybe if I hit 200k one day, I will gift myself a caviar diana bag but i recently got this one in the all black and i really like vintage chanel bags primarily the fact that they actually used to dip all their hardware in 24 karat gold they no longer do anymore so if you actually compare the gold on their vintage bags versus their new bags the vintage ones have a more yellow sheen to them because it actually has gold the new ones i don't think have any gold on them they're just gold colored metal so this one is my new baby and my favorite. I have been wearing her nonstop since I got her. The strap up here does not have the leather shoulder strap. So yeah, it will dig into my shoulders a little bit, but it does have leather going through the chain, which kind of alleviates the hardness of the metal on your skin. And it kind of gives you a little bit of cushioning. When I look at this bag, it actually looks a little bit more brown than black, but I'm totally okay with that. I actually tried on the brown one when I was in floor, no, LA 
tried on the brown one when I was in LA with Peter back in February and you honestly can't tell the difference between black and brown sometimes. It honestly really depends on how well somebody took care of this bag so it might have had some color deterioration from sitting in the sun. I don't know. Regardless of the fact this bag is really well taken care of and I'm very happy with it. I'm so happy that this bag is finally part of my collection and I love it to bits. So yeah, you guys are gonna be seeing a lot more of this on my YouTube channel over the course of the next couple of months as I wear her out a little bit more. Next is a bag you guys are all familiar with already as well too because I wear her so much and this is my Celine classic box bag in the medium size. So I got this one on my second trip to Paris two years ago I think with Mel and this was a bag that came with the story. We had to go line up at Celine every single morning for three days straight right at opening to get our hands on this one because during the process of that trip I think Phoebe Philo was actually leaving Celine and Heidi Slamine was popping in to be the new creative director. I am not a fan of Heidi Slamine's work so I really want to get my hands on this bag before they changed the logo and took away the accent on the E. This one still has the E accent as part of the logo on here so it's kind of like a part of my Phoebe Philo admiration collection. I don't, I don't have a collection but I wanted to get a piece from her work before she left the house so I picked up this one and I got it after three days of stocking that store. They were selling out like hotcakes amidst the changeover of creative directors because a lot of people really really love and admire uh, Phoebe's work so it was really hard to get a hold of this bag and every time I went for the two days before it it was always sold out and they never guaranteed when the bag would come back in so I'm really happy that I picked it up. Besides my Gucci Soho Disco bag, this is probably my second most used and worn bag because it is humongous inside. I'm going to show you guys. It is a giant organ like this. There's two compartments and I can fit so much stuff in here. I never have to worry about lack of space or things squishing. So you love this one two bits. I actually really want to get this one in the taupe colored. It's like a nice sandy brown because I think that would really match the rest of my wardrobe as well. And because I get so much wear out of it, I'm confident that even if I was to get a different color, I would still use it just as much. So it's a really, really good investment for me, this particular style. Have you guys already started to like pick up on the style of bags that I like yet? If not, I'll let you guys know by the end of this video my particular style when it comes to bags. Size-wise, next up is my Louis Vuitton toiletry pouch. I believe this is the 26. I think this is the 26. I can't remember off the top of my head. This bag, oh my lord, it took me so long to get a hold of this bag. Probably a whole year. When we were in Paris, before I bought um, the Chanel bag, actually that same trip, I went into Louis Vuitton and they had this bag in stock there and I said no because I had just bought the Chanel bag and I didn't want to buy two bags to bring home. I felt like I was wasting too much. Biggest regret of my life. For the whole next year afterwards, everywhere we went in Europe and even in Canada and the States, I could not get this bag anywhere. I was on wait lists of like two, three hundred people and it just seemed physically impossible until one day when we were in, I think it was not Amsterdam, I think we were in Copenhagen last year. <sighs> that makes me so sad. This time last year we were in Copenhagen in Sweden and having an amazing time. But I got this bag last year in Copenhagen. I walked into an LV store not really expecting them to have this, but I guess there weren't a lot of people that were shopping there and it wasn't like heavy tourist season yet. So they had it in stock and I instantly snatched it up without having to be on any sort of wait list. And I'm so happy. It is a beautiful little clutch bag. I actually use this a lot more as an evening bag because I can carry it underneath my arms like this just because it doesn't have a strap. But I did notice that Samorga has some inserts online with D-ring hooks on the side that I can attach straps to. So I think I might actually look into getting one of those so that I can wear it over my shoulder a little bit more and turn it into more of like a hands-free bag as opposed to a clutch bag. It's supposed to be a toiletry pouch, which means you put your, I don't know, your feminine hygiene products, your skincare, your makeup, whatever when you go traveling. I'm not gonna do that to this bag. This bag costs like five, six hundred dollars, so I'm not trying to damage it on the inside. It's beautiful leather. We're gonna try to keep it as pristine as possible. So I actually use this as more of a clutch evening purse type of thing. And I absolutely love it. And as hard as it was to get a hold of this bag, I think that makes me appreciate the bag so much more. Moving along in sizing, I have this Prada bag. Don't ask me what this bag is called. I have absolutely no idea the name of it. This is another bag that I got in collaboration with Rebonds, similar to my Chloe Faye bag. I actually really, really love this bag. And at that time when I got this, I was experimenting a lot with color. So I was really in love with the shade of this. It's like a beautiful royal blue. It has gold hardware here. And then the strap is that thick fabric guitar strap. And it comes in like blue, red, and white, and a little bit of cream along here. I do wish that the strap was detachable. Actually, I think it is detachable. You definitely could take it off if you took off these buckles and replace it with something else. But I've never once tried. And I don't really have any other straps to attach onto here. 
here so I think it would be a waste if I was to take this off and to use something else but I really like it because of the size and the shape of the bag it makes it easy for me to throw things in it has a magnetic clasp at the front and similar to a lot of my other bags it's just a giant hole like this so I can throw a lot into it like a lot a lot and it also has this functional flap on the back here this little pocket where when I was taking TTC I would just throw my presto pass into here now that we have a car and because we're in the middle of the pandemic Peter and I take public transit a lot less so haven't had to really use my Presto Pass that much yet. So the only thing with this bag is that because it is blue and at that time when I got the bag, I was playing around a lot more with color. I'm not anymore. So I'm not too sure how I feel about this. And I actually think I might be putting this bag up for sale because I haven't reached for this bag in well over a year and a half. And I think that warrants the bag to be sold to a home where somebody else can appreciate it a little bit more than me since I don't really reach for it as often. I've been finding myself reaching for a lot of my neutral and black and brown bags a lot more so I think that although I still do love this bag from the bottom of my heart it no longer serves its purpose for me so it's time for it to move on and to find a new home this next bag is one of my other dream bags as well similar to my Chanel small Diana and it is my Dior saddle bag so I got this one back last year so last year yeah last spring or fall in Amsterdam I got a hold of this bag and then I got a hold of the strap in London when I went with Mel in the fall of last year so I have been eyeing these saddlebags for so long ever since they got reissued I just love the uniqueness of how the bag looks it's so different from all my other bags and actually really counterintuitive once I walk you guys through what my dream ideal bag is like I just really liked the workmanship of this and it looked stunning it looks like a piece of art the problem with me is that if bags are beautiful i will buy them <laughs> even if they're not necessarily functional just because they look so amazing i also love the gold hardware i think it works really well with the oxblood tone of this bag and the story with the color of this bag is that when this bag was first released everybody from their mother to their grandmother was obsessed with the oblique print on this or in the all black shade and i wanted something a little bit different and the sa in amsterdam told me that this bag in the specific shade was actually relatively rare and they hadn't released that many of them and it was going to be only in Europe and honestly just knowing that kind of sold me on it and like I said at that time I was wearing a lot more color a lot of reds and burgundies so this bag really suited my wardrobe then now though since I don't wear it as much I wear a lot more black and whites and neutrals I still do find that this bag fits my wardrobe overall because it is a very dark color and it's kind of like a jewel tone it kind of matches a lot of my outfits that I wear on a day-to-day -day basis but I'm not quite sure if color wise this will be a bag that I gravitate to as frequently now as I did last year since it's such a unique color on its own I've actually contemplated either trading this in and getting a more neutral color or just getting a secondary bag in a more neutral color. Dior just released a beautiful creamy latte beige color for their cruise collection and I'm head over heels in love with it but I really don't need a secondary saddle bag because as much as I love it the shape isn't always the most practical. I can fit a lot into this one. I can't fathom what people put into their small mini one. I think for now I'm going to just leave it as is. Be happy with this bag because I am very happy with this bag. I still love it to bits. I'm not over it whatsoever at all yet but I think in the future I do foresee myself adding another color to my collection probably in a more neutral everyday shade that is going to be easier for me to match with everything in my closet but I love it and the strap it's stunning as a crossbody bag it's like probably one of my favorites the way it just like sits over your chest when you're wearing it second last bag I'm going to show you guys is my Mansour Gabrielle bag so I actually bought this bag I don't even know how long ago it was many years ago from Holt Renfrew when they had it in stock and I was really obsessed with bucket bags so i really like this back then mansur gabriel was super super popular and i wanted something a little bit different from everybody else because everybody had the black bag with the pink and the beige interior so when i saw this one with silver on the inside this is also at a point when i was really obsessed with ysl and i thought this was super edgy as you can see the interior has this really silver reflective it's not even the lining it's just like the other side of the leather has been dyed and treated to be silver patent when i saw this bag i fell in love with it and i thought it was so edgy and different that i had to get it for myself so i got it and i wore it for the longest time only to realize after i started wearing this a lot was that i actually hate bucket bags with a passion they are so bulky they sit on your hips and just like spring outwards that it just doesn't sit right and looks really weird kind of like 
I'm pregnant, if that makes sense. So I haven't gotten a lot of wear out of this bag over the past recent years and I'm really considering selling this. It's still in like pretty good condition, minus like a scratch or two here and there. But I think with the lack of actual usage I put this bag through, it doesn't warrant me keeping it. I am probably never going to use it ever again just because I don't foresee myself wearing a bucket bag anytime soon. I don't even know why I bought a bucket bag this big. Like this thing is humongous. I definitely should have gotten like a smaller size because I have like no purpose for this. And every time I throw things in, I'm always so afraid I'm going to scratch the silver interior lining since it's so reflective and very evident if you scratch it. So... This one is definitely going to be sold, hopefully within the next year. Okay, so very last bag I'm gonna show you guys, and this was actually the very first designer bag that I ever purchased on one of my first trips to Toronto with a friend many, many years ago. I think I've had this bag for like seven to eight years now, and it is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull in their Demir Aben color. This is the MM size, the medium one. Back when I bought this bag, it actually after retail, and tax was like $1,100. I think this bag currently retails for $1,400 pre-tax. And even though I don't wear it that much because I find the straps are really thin and they dig into my shoulders when I put it on, especially if you're loading it up with stuff. Um, because the retail value has gone up so much, I'm just gonna keep this to myself in my collection at home just so that I can continue to appreciate in value and to pass it on to my daughter or my nieces or nephew in the future because I'm not gonna get wear out of it, but I can definitely foresee them getting a lot of wear out of it. And the bag is still in very good condition, so it's gonna fetch quite a bit if I keep this in my collection for a couple more years. I really liked this bag when I first bought it. It served me great. I wore it to work every single day. I threw my laptop in here and my lunch and my water bottle and my gym attire and that's probably why it killed my shoulder because I was putting so much in here for these tiny tiny straps to support. I think you're not really supposed to put that much in here but I find that that's counterintuitive. If you have a bag this big you should be able to put things in it like it's a tote bag you should be able to carry things. So because of that I just don't end up really wearing the bag anymore and mostly because I work from home so much now I have no use really for a tote even though I do have my eye on one of the Dior book totes. I think I've just over the years learned that I've just become a Dior girl and every bag that they have I drool over so yeah there's that. But this bag is going to be staying in my collection even though I don't wear it as often and I will definitely be passing this on to my future children one day. So I have a total of 14 luxury designer handbags. Now that I'm counting them all it definitely feels like a lot but like I said I have a couple that I definitely do want to sell to make room for other bags in the future down the road. I think this is a healthy collection for me. I don't necessarily need to add more. I think I just need to thin out the ones that I don't wear as often and then keep it as classic as possible so all the bags that I have are ones that I will constantly and want to reach for. That way they all serve a functional purpose. But yeah, it actually rounds it out. I thought I had a lot more for some reason. I don't know why, but it didn't really have as many as I thought I did. So in regards to my ideal bag, if you guys haven't already caught on, my favorite bags are very boxy styled bags. I love a very structural bag and which is primarily why I really liked this Diana one because it has a very hard structure and shape to it. I also love bags with flaps, so if it's really easy to open for me to just lift up the flap and to go inside to get things, I am over the moon excited for it. I also love, love, love bags that are crossbody, which makes it really easy for me to be hands-free and to do other things. And my bags also need to have a huge black hole in them as well for them to be functional for me. If the bag has too many flaps to go through, too many compartments for me to search through and I can't find my things as easily as I would like in, and if I can't find my things as easily as I would like inside of them, then I get annoyed by the bag. So that's ultimately it. Essentially, I love this bag. I love this bag and the Gucci Soho Disco bag because it seals with the zipper even though it doesn't have a flap. But my biggest thing is the security, the flap. It cannot be like an open bag at the top without anything to keep it shut. But yeah, that is my ideal bag. So I had fun filming this and kind of sharing with you guys my current handbag collection. I'm very excited to see where I will be at next year this time and if there are any new ones added to my collection or if there are any that have been removed and sold. Like I said, I'm going to be selling a couple of them. So if you guys are interested in the ones that I mentioned in this video that I will be selling, please definitely make sure to shoot me an email or send me a DM on Instagram because I'd be more than happy to give you guys first dibs of them if you are interested. Otherwise, I will be listing them all up on Poshmark 
or on a consignment store and you guys will be able to get links to where my bags are available on Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a chance to see my whole designer handbag collection and then you can get a grasp of which ones are my current favorites that I'm wearing a lot. I'm very curious to see if these same favorites will be around next year this time. But yeah, that is the video. If you guys want to get more of me, you can always follow me on Instagram or on TikTok. I am on both of those platforms a lot more frequently than YouTube. So if this isn't enough of me on here, you can definitely get way more of me on there. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and had an amazing day. I will see you in the next video.